Het is SpaceX gelukt om de grootste raket ooit te lanceren. SpaceX heeft grote plannen met deze raket. Het moet astronauten naar de maan brengen en in de toekomst zelfs naar Mars. Gejuich in India vanmiddag, want het is toen dat land gelukt om een ruimtevaartuig op de maan te laten landen. De Odysseus is als eerste commerciële maanlander aller tijden geland op de maan. China heeft met succes een maanlander gelanceerd. De Chang'e 6 gaat naar de achterkant van de maan. De maan. Terug van nooit weg geweest. Elk land wil er naartoe. Maar waarom eigenlijk? Met de lancering van de Sputnik 1 in 1957 brengen de Sovjets een race naar de ruimte op gang. De Amerikanen moeten nu wat doen. The public really was very bothered and in Washington where I was at the time, all of a sudden there was this feeling that that all the science courses had deserted us. The whole country uh, felt bothered by this. Americans were avid readers of, of science fiction really since the 30s. There was a fascination for the moon, dating really back to, to Jules Verne. In effect, the moon's in, in, in the perfect position. It's, it's far away, but it's still reachable. Uh, and the fact that a, a man could go there, it's, it's almost like the new frontier. And if you, if you consider that the Americans were built on the idea of the frontier ethic and had run out of places to colonize in a way, uh, the moon fits that perfectly. Project Mercury was born October 7, 1958. Program approval was granted one week after the establishment of the new National Aeronautics and Space Agency. Program mission, put a man into space, orbit him around the Earth, and recover him safely. The word astronaut was coined in that speech. Uh, up until then, the only talk you heard about pilots who would fly in space, they were all cosmonauts which was a great and inventive name, but uh, Keith Glennon was the administrator, the first administrator of NASA, and God bless him, he didn't want to sit, sit still for cosmonaut forevermore. So. Because cosmonaut was a Russian word? Yes, indeed. In the Russian laboratoria blijken nu evenals in America, mensen in drug cabines to worden getest and opgeleid for hun toekomstige taak. Bij een lage druk, zoals die op grote hoogte heerst, treedt dampontwikkeling op. The Russians were very clever about this because they were using their strengths to their great, to its greatest purpose. Um, what they had was a very powerful rocket. Technologically, they were rather backward, but they used that very powerful rocket to shoot various things into space at clever intervals to embarrass the Americans. So they were the first ones to have a satellite in space. They were the first ones to put a dog in space, the first ones to put a man in space, first one to put two men in space and a woman in space. They see it as a very convenient way of making the Americans look silly. We never saw any disasters in the Russian program, but they had their share. <laughs> they had a neat trick of launching on Saturday night when the whole world was shut down for the weekend. If the rocket took off from out in western, eastern Russia, they could clock it all the way around to about South America, and if it was still flying, then they would go ahead and make an announcement uh, an hour and a half after launch. And uh, we always thought that was a little sp spicy. Говорит Москва. Передаем сообщение ТАСС о первом в мире полете человека в космическое пространство. When Yuri Gagarin in 1961 becomes the first 
human being to travel in space. For Kennedy, that's in, in effect like his Sputnik. Uh, I need a space spectacular that will allow me to catch up with the Russians. What, what can we do uh, which will allow us to, to set a goal that we can reach before the Russians? And the answer that they come up with is the moon. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Putting man on the moon is costing 10,000 million pounds, presumably as many rubles. Critics say it's a flight from reality, a costly distraction from confronting poverty on Earth. There was huge discussion. This was the 1960s, 1964 to 1968 was the period of, of massive uh, uh, race riots in 110 different American cities, people dying. Uh, it seemed quite obvious that there were plenty of things to spend money on. The uh, Vietnam War was still just going away, the biggest event going, and uh, we couldn't draw attention away from it. And I can remember there were astronauts who began to feel badly about the space program, which seemed so sophomoric at the time when we were a major war with a lot of people were getting killed. And that was about 67 when a lot of things happened in that war. December 21st, 1968, the shortest day of the year but in significance, perhaps one of the longest in the flow of history. Then all of a sudden, we flew the first manned Apollo. Apollo 8 didn't exist until September of 68, and we flew it on New Year's Eve of December. Now that is really a NASA landmark. I mean, beyond, it's incredible. Astronauts, spacecraft, flight controllers, computers. The precision was fantastic. Then on the second day out, the world looked in on the crew via television. This transmission is coming to you approximately halfway between the moon and the earth. We've been uh, 31 hours, about 20 minutes into the flight. We have about uh, less than 40 hours left to go to the moon. It is timed perfectly uh, in the sense that the only time that they can shoot the rocket off is at a time which will mean that they will be uh, circling the moon on Christmas Eve, which has a special resonance for the American people. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, and God bless all of you. All of you on the good earth. Wil je meer? Abonneer.